Thanks, Yolanda. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's fantastic to be back at NWC and, and to speak with you all this morning. Um, so I'm going to change it up a bit this morning and talk you through the last six years at Truephone and working with Apple on enabling eSIM and what our experience has been and what that means for the mobile industry and ultimately share with you what is the inconvenient truth for many of us in this room about what eSIM really means. So for us, it all started with the iPad. We met with Apple and we were introduced to this concept that you could unbox your iPad, you could turn it on, and it could connect instantly. The idea that you didn't need a SIM card to connect this brand new device become a fascination for us at Truephone, right? And we started to dig, dig, dig into what can make this really work and start to work with suppliers on how to enable this experience of enabling eSIM on the iPad. And what we discovered that every single person that we talked to all they wanted to do was replicate what you do with the SIM card and turn it into an eSIM. The way you procured an eSIM platform was by buying inventory of eSIM profiles, right? It's kind of mental that you take a physical thing and try and turn that into something digital, yet you're buying inventory of something that effectively lives in a database. Right, and so what this obsession turned into was the inspiration for us to make the technology ourselves for a platform that could actually scale eSIM in the market, okay? And so over the next six years, we worked with Apple, Samsung, Google, and many IoT manufacturers to enable eSIM connectivity using the technology that we created. If you go onto the Apple Store today, you cannot buy a cellular product that does not contain an eSIM. Yet, it's crazy to hear from Pablo that consumers don't know about it. Now, we're in this room probably very highly informed individuals around eSIM, but as you walk around the, the conference halls here, most of us will have an eSIM in our pocket and a large proportion of us will actually not know it's even there, okay? And it's, Part of this is to do with the industry's obsession with this little piece of plastic, right? We still love the SIM card, okay? We love to order them. Over the last two years, for any operators in the room, I am sure you have had conversations with your SIM vendors about buying a few more SIMs because of the chip shortage, right? Or you've ordered some new form factor to, to launch an eco-SIM uh, as a sustainability initiative to, to reduce the waste of the packaging. But ultimately, we are still obsessed with this bit of plastic. The face that we give customers about mobile plans as I walk around the UK high street at home is still the SIM. And you go to the website of most major operators and the thing that we scream to customers is the SIM card. So we should not be surprised when Pablo talks about consumers uh, not embracing uh, eSIM because we're not talking to them about it. And we are trying to take this mindset that their eSIM is just another SIM and it just doesn't work, right? Many of us will still be hunting around for a paper clip, a staple, an earring, or the SIM removal tool that falls out of the box when you unbox a new iPhone to, to quite quickly get your device connected. And so not much has changed across the industry. At Truephone, I still feel like I'm an alien from another planet when I talk about eSIM to so many people, okay? And it's a real, real shame. This is how we talk to customers as an industry about eSIM. Here's, here's a response to someone who wanted to move their eSIM from one device to another. Hello, thanks for reaching out. Currently, we don't support eSIM transfer yet, so you will need to buy a new eSIM from our store. Hope this helps, okay, right? It's nuts. How can you transfer all of your apps, your data, your whole life from one device to another, yet you cannot transfer your mobile subscription um, over there? It, it, it's crazy that we tolerate this type of attitude towards consumers. Here's another one. A customer's reached out, he knows about eSIM this time, but we respond, oh, it's definitely on the cards this year. Our tech peeps haven't finalized the date yet, but we'll let you know. 
If any other service industry approached customers like this when they were trying to acquire a, a service, they will go bankrupt. Yet we, with the transition from SIM to eSIM, seem to find it acceptable that we can talk to customers like this when they're trying to use their brand new device that they love, right? There's the confusion in the market. I, I think we, we have so much work to do to, to move the industry along and start to embrace the eSIM. So we all have been talking about this for years and, and what is the real holdup? Why, why are we really struggling with this? And I think my view on this is that the mindset is all wrong. And it comes back to what I said earlier, is we have this obsession with trying to make the eSIM just another SIM. And this mindset um, is creating so much confusion when we talk to our product teams and, and development teams and trying to launch new propositions that we, we get really confused about it and we start to get paranoid. We start talking about excuses, well, it's, it's okay, not enough devices support eSIM yet, okay? That somehow makes it okay not to invest in the customer experience. Or eSIM will be available just after we've digitized all of our other platforms and our transformation is completed, right? Or, well, we can't possibly support eSIM because it's going to destroy all of our roaming revenues. Or, well, we don't want to support eSIM because the OEMs will suddenly become the gatekeeper between our customers and the network. We get really paranoid about this transition and we start thinking inside, internally. We start get very looking over our shoulders about what, what this all, all means. But I developed this model for where I think most operators and device manufacturers that are, that are looking at eSIM. And I ask you all to, to challenge yourself to where you think you might sit. And to explain this model a little bit, I, I first will describe the magpie. And the magpie is a bird that loves shiny objects. They look at the new technology that's out in the market and they experiment and they play with it for a bit, maybe get a project out, and then they move on to the next thing. And I see carriers do this um, over and over again with their initial project to support the eSIM and then they'll move on to the next thing without thinking about how customers will actually use it. There are others out there who have gone the bull who's flat out looking at eSIM, embracing it as part of their business and supporting every single device that comes to market and putting it as part of their uh, product and service experience. And then there's the ostrich who sits there, head in the sand, waiting for eSIM to go away, right? They simply are trying to ignore it, ignore the customers and maybe it will, will disappear. Well, unfortunately for the ostrich, it, it's not going anywhere. And then I think there's the goat. And the goat has embraced eSIM, but he's in the corner, grumpy at all the cost that's been incurred to support eSIM. And he's frustrated that no one's actually using it and that it's all too complicated. We've got all these platforms, yet no one seems to want it. Consumers don't care. And so I ask you, well, where do you think you sit and where do you want to start to, to embrace eSIM? And, why I ask this question is because there is an inconvenient truth that we all need to understand. And that is simply that the SIM slot will disappear, okay? This is going to happen. The timing of this we can debate, but ultimately what we currently do with the, the traditional SIM for the last 20 years is all going to change and the SIM slot will disappear from more and more devices over the coming years. The reference architecture is on my wrist. The Apple Watch, a completely standalone device, can do cellular calls, data. It doesn't have a SIM slot. We have the reference model. We know we can do it. And this is going to scale across the market. So I'm not here to preach about anyone who's still using a SIM card is, is wrong or, or stupid. But what I want to talk about is, you know, how the belief in the eSIM promise and what that's doing for, for Truefone and, and our business. And so we are working with a number of partners such as Sony, Nordic Semiconductor, Apple, Samsung to create smaller, more efficient and faster devices. eSIM is a small but really, really important part of enabling um, the creation of fantastic new products that customers can use. We're helping 
a number of customers simplify the logistics of how they can distribute devices to their customers and get them connected. You know, create a single stock keeping unit that you can include eSIM capabilities, you can unbox that device, and it will just work, right? And eSIM is just a hidden part of enabling that promise, right? And eSIM is also enabling true choice and flexibility for customers. You can switch to the operator of your choosing, whether it's an IoT device, a consumer device, that the power of choice is in the customer's hands, and eSIM is a part of that. It's not an illusion of choice. We don't lock customers in with the, with the use of the eSIM. And for our customers and our, our business, we have moved from a world where we would normally, every six months, order a batch of SIM cards from a supplier, agree a specification with them, commit to some volumes, agree on the branding, put them in our warehouse, ship them to distributors, have them available to activate, and then the reality is a lot of those SIMs actually never got used by customers because a few years later some branding changed and we would have to do that cycle again. We've had instances where supplier issues have caused um, shortages and we've had to switch suppliers and so we've ended up over-ordering. We've moved from a world where we, that was part of business as usual to a world where we can create SIM profiles in our infrastructure in a matter of minutes, right? When a customer wants an eSIM from Truephone to connect their device, we just create it on the fly. And all of that is done from some secure infrastructure and just when we need it. So you pay for only what you need. And we're enabling this for over 45 network operators across the world currently and continue to grow that with, with our customers, okay? We're also seen a number of new experiences being enabled for our customers, where previously SIM fulfillment was just this long wait step in our fulfillment and order process. If someone needed a new SIM, they'd just have to accept that they had to wait. We've moved to a world where we are able to instantly ship a SIM card with just a few API calls, right? And that experience has allowed us to not only enable um, Truephone's uh, connectivity customers with a, a new experience, it's also enabled new partners to be able to offer eSIM to their customers. And so a new breed of digital brands are able to introduce eSIM to, to their customers. And to share one of those examples, the Swiss Railway are offering eSIM to their passengers before some of the major network operators in the UK can deliver an eSIM to their customers. Right, and so being able to expose this to new players who want to embrace eSIM as part of their service offering is all possible. And ultimately, our platform is making it easier for customers to activate, right? When you buy a new device, I did this for my wife just a couple of, couple of weeks ago. She bought the new iPhone 13. To set up that new device, all she had to do was put the new device next to the old one, and all of her apps and her eSIM transferred over to the new device, right? No paperclip, no nothing, everything is just simple. When one of our customers loses their phone in a, in a taxi, they call our support center and we can ship them a new SIM straight away on their, on their replacement device and they're back, back online with, with their phone number. Ultimately, eSIM is making things easier for our customers. And what does this has really mean? Well, eSIM has transformed what Truephone do as a company. We went, when we launched our eSIM technology and made this available to device manufacturers and network operators, we've since activated 18 million eSIMs on, on our infrastructure. And we're very much at the forefront of this evolution towards um, eSIM adoption, and we think we're just getting started. And we're so proud of the work that we've done with so many of our partners on enabling new types of solutions for the market. So my daughter's first mobile phone isn't actually a phone. It's an Apple Watch that has a, her first mobile number is from Truephone and it's all powered by eSIM, okay? We are enabling our customers to offer uh, cellular connectivity when you go for a run or a swim or health monitoring for your grandparents. 
We're enabling pet trackers thanks to eSIM, where you can actually track the health and location of your pets. And we're helping businesses simplify how they manage connectivity uh, in a secure and, and manageable way, right? eSIM is most certainly here to stay, and it's creating a whole lot of new opportunities for, for players involved. And I'm very, very proud to work for a, and lead a product and technology organization that ultimately is cre creating the world's most complete uh, eSIM solution, where we can work with device manufacturers to integrate eSIM capabilities into their products where we can work with network operators to help them take what was a very analog, hassly experience of, a, of shipping SIM cards and transform their business over into a new way of doing things with our remote SIM provisioning to securely manage their SIM inventory and activate it for their customers and an entitlements platform that allows them to automatically con configure devices and make sure the end-to-end -end service experience actually works for customers. We're working with device manufacturers to embed our bootstrap connectivity to make sure that every single product that comes out of the factory is able to connect, whether that's on Wi-Fi or cellular, making sure it's got default connectivity that can make eSIM actually work. And we're exposing that to more and more partners and customers to integrate into their businesses. So whether APIs to offer eSIMs as part of an existing product or service, a IoT solution provider that wants to support managed connectivity and manage multiple different carrier profiles for, for their IoT solution, or develop a completely new digital brand, an MVNO, uh, on the back of a, an app-based solution. Okay? There's so much to this, and Truephone is, is definitely at the center of being able to enable that for, for customers. So I'm going to leave you today with a, with a final question. And that question is, you, you may ignore everything I've, I've said today, that um, the current way of doing things and adopting eSIM, moving, moving to eSIM as another form factor is, is, is OK. But ultimately, that inconvenient truth that the SIM slot is going to disappear is something that you are going to have to embrace whether you like it or not. And I ask you, if you're not going to do that now, then when are you going to do that? So if you'd like to discuss that with any of the Truphone team, we're in Hall 5, um, we have our booth, please come and check, it, check us out and have a, have a deeper conversation, and we're more than happy to answer some questions um, out in the foyer. But thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the show. <laughs>